right, so this is the new Mac Studio. You've seen a few videos on it already and you're excited to see what it can do for you. And if this is finally the one that you buy after skipping all the other M1 Macs in the lineup. Well, let's get into it. So we're gonna get into the design, do a couple of quick benchmarks and then play with some stuff in Premiere Pro. Just to note, this is also the base level Mac Studio with nothing upgraded. So it's literally the cheapest one you can get. And our aim is to discover whether you need to upgrade or whether you can just go with the cheapest model. Firstly, for the power of this thing, it's still pretty small, which is great because it's designed to go on top of your desk. It's about the size of two, maybe two and a half Mac minis stacked on top of each other. On the front, you have an SD card reader and two USB-C ports. These will be Thunderbolt ports if you're on the M1 Ultra version. Then on the back, we have four Thunderbolt ports, an Ethernet cable, two USB-A ports, which is actually clutch in my opinion, HDMI 2.0, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. On the back is also the spot for the power adapter, which is all built in, so there's no brick, and the plug isn't as huge as the MacBook Pro. There's also a speaker on it too, as a bit of an extra. It's definitely not something you wanna be using all the time. There's no bass or depth, but it's cool to have it as an extra if you edit from headphones normally, and just want a little speaker to show someone something real quick. It was the first ever selfie camera. Yes. So they had to spend time talking about FaceTime and like what you can do with a front-facing camera. The design is just clean, minimal, and will literally fit in any setup. It works really well in my new desk setup. I also think it's mad that this thing is actually portable. Imagine an M1 Ultra and something that's actually portable, and all you really need is a monitor. Now this is the basic model with the M1 Max, like I said earlier. It has 10 core CPU and a 24 core GPU with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And I have here a 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro with a 32 core GPU and I wanted to run some tests to see if it's even worth upgrading to that 32 core GPU. I did do some benchmarks even though that's not really my thing. So let's just talk about those and then we'll get into some real world tests with Premiere Pro which is not optimized but I'll put this machine for its paces. So on Cinebench I ran a CPU test and these were the results. The Mac Studio actually beat the 16 inch MacBook Pro in a single core and multi core but honestly the difference is so small that it's just not worth looking at. In the metal GPU test, the 24 core Studio scored 59,830, whereas the 32 core scored 69,255. That's somewhere between a 15 and 20% difference there, and you'll see that theme starting to develop as this video goes on. Then I got into some disk speed tests, and interestingly, the write speed on the Mac Studio is actually a little bit slower, coming in anywhere between 4,300 and 4,700 megabytes per second, Whereas on the 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro, it came in at about 5,000 to 5,400 megabytes per second. In the read speed, they're pretty similar at around 5,100, 5,200 megabytes per second. So read speed, they're pretty similar between the MacBook Pro and the Mac Studio, but write speed, the MacBook Pros are actually quicker. <laughs> Now let's get into the nitty gritty with some Premiere Pro export times. This video isn't gonna be Premiere Pro based, so I'll be doing lots more tests with the base level Mac Studio and Premiere Pro in the coming days. If you wanna be here when that video comes out, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell. So we've got a couple of projects of varying complexity on the SanDisk Extreme Pro uh, SSD, and we're gonna do some export tests with these projects. Okay, so here's a project which is a seven minute wedding video edited with a couple of different LUTs, a handful of split screen effects, and up to three layers of 4K footage. Some of it is in 10 bit. Let's export this out in the 4K YouTube preset on both the base level Mac Studio and the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the 32 core GPU upgrade. Okay, so results are back in with that and the Mac Studio exported the seven minute video in five minutes and 19 seconds. And the MacBook Pro exported the same video in four minutes and 54 seconds. Really not a huge difference there, less than 10% in fact. But this was just a simple project, so let's move on to something a bit more complex. So this here is a slightly more advanced project, which is all shot in 4K 10-bit 420 in H.265, which is normally a difficult codec for any machine. I can't show too much of the project, just for privacy reasons, but this one has a lot of dynamic link clips with After Effects, text tracking, masks, stabilization, and effects. So it's a lot more intense for the export to deal with. So let's export this six and a half minute video on both of these and see how they compare. So the Mac Studio exported this project in six minutes and 45 seconds, 
which was almost real time and still really impressive given the amount of effects in this project. And the MacBook Pro with that upgraded GPU did it in five minutes and 56 seconds, which is again is about 15% faster but again, this isn't a huge difference for a project of this size. Export wise, you'd have to decide if that extra minute or so is worth the amount you'd pay for the GPU upgrade. Of course, there's a lot more tests to do on Premiere Pro to put this machine through its paces, so I'll be doing a full video on as many tests as I can think to do in the next few days. So make sure you guys subscribe to see that. So if you've been waiting for the right M1 desktop Mac to buy, is this finally the one you get? For me, I'd say 100% yes. Up until now, we've only had the M1 Mac Mini, which runs on the original M1 chip. And while it's enough for a casual user, power users just need that little bit more. Then we had the M1 Max, but it was only available in a laptop. And now we've got that same power in a small desktop machine with extra benefits like more Thunderbolt ports, USB-A ports, and it's still relatively portable as well. Then of course, there's upgradability all the way up to M1 Ultra and 128 gigabytes of unified RAM. So there's plenty of options for everyone in just this one machine. So that's been the Mac Studio. If you have any questions or want me to do any particular tests at all, um, specifically on Adobe Premiere Pro or After Effects, leave them down below in the comments. I've got this for a few more days, so I'm happy to do as many tests as you like. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.